I will tell you that I would be surprised is if we come out of this economic cycle and we have the money printing that I expect us to have, I would be surprised if Bitcoin does not make new highs on the on the other side of this. Okay, so that means that I do expect it to get to the seventy hundred thousand dollar range in the next couple of years. So uh, that's number one. Number two, I do believe that we get some the, we get some regulatory clarity around the cryptocurrency space, and that helps separate Bitcoin from the rest of the cryptocurrencies. And it enables institutional investors to step into the market and understand what the regulations are. James Lavish, a popular Bitcoin advocate and co-managing partner at the Bitcoin Opportunity Fund, recently gave his short and long-term price predictions for the leading cryptocurrency. During a recent interview with Michelle McElroy, the lead anchor and editor-in-chief at Kiko News, Lavish, who describes himself as a reformed hedge fund manager, discussed the many important economic and geopolitical events that are unfolding at once and how he expects them to impact Bitcoin. One event Lavish believes will impact Bitcoin in the short term is the ongoing double liquidity drain by the United States Federal Reserve and Treasury Department. The central bank announced some quantitative tightening measures last year as a part of its aggressive campaign to bring down the 40-year high inflation. Experts believe the economy has not felt the full brunt of the Fed's aggressive campaign because of the debt ceiling and banking crisis, both of which forced some more liquidity back into the economy and created a liquidity-neutral environment. According to Lavish, the U.S. economy is now about to smash into a full-blown liquidity crisis as the Treasury Department goes about refilling the nation's coffers. While the Fed is still trying to reduce its multi-trillion dollar balance sheet, the Treasury Department will also be sucking liquidity out of the markets by issuing new Treasury bills. The resulting liquidity drain, to the tune of over $1 trillion, will put a lot of strain on all asset prices, including Bitcoin, which is more naturally volatile. But Lavish is counting on the Fed's proclivity to jump to the market's rescue at the tiniest hint of danger. When this happens, the renowned analyst is convinced that Bitcoin will easily make new highs within the next two years. During his discussion with McCory, Lavish also gave his long-term outlook for Bitcoin, describing how and when he expects the leading crypto asset to hit the $1 million mark per coin. As we bring you clips from the interview, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for your continued support and enjoy the video. I believe it would it would be a negative effect on Bitcoin. And so that's why I'm being careful and I'm slowly accumulating. Uh, I do think that it could have a, a sharp downturn, but I think it would be short lived. And uh, and, you know, I, Bitcoin does what it does. It's a it, it's a massively volatile asset. Uh, but my comfort is that it's a volatile asset that's appreciating over time. And so an asset that appreciates over time with volatility is actually a good thing. And so it allows you to find spots and to, you know, if you're if you're the kind of person who dollar cost averages every day or every week or every month, then you're probably going to do just fine. Um, and however, uh, in gold and silver, I think they can, you know, gold, I think I, it could be up 50% uh, in, in when we have this kind of sharp uh, drawdown and then, a, uh, a you know, the Fed stepping in and easing, we get the quantitative easing again. Um, there's a lot of paper in gold. And so there's there's some worry that, 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 uh, that appreciation is held up a little bit. But I still believe that gold is a great place to be, as well as Bitcoin. Number two, I do believe that we get some the, we get some regulatory clarity around the cryptocurrency space, and that helps separate Bitcoin from the rest of the cryptocurrencies, and it enables institutional investors to step into the market and understand what the regulations are, and that it really is hard money. It, it's a commodity. Then they can invest in it that way. And I do believe that that will take some of the asset allocation out of their bond portfolio eventually and go into the Bitcoin portfolio. And there'll be a separate asset class on their balance sheet. And once that happens, Michelle, I believe that they're going to have, they're going to start uh, establishing one to 3% positions in, in, in just Bitcoin. And so if you do out the math and you think about it, there's about, $100 trillion of, of stocks, $120 trillion of, of, of bonds. There's uh, $30 trillion of art and collectibles, about $280 trillion of, of, uh, of real estate. And, uh, and when you add up all that and gold, 
you get to about $700 trillion, give or take, of, of investment assets, right? And so if you have just a 1% position in Bitcoin, that's $7 trillion over 21 million coins, and that gets you to over $300,000 Bitcoin price. And that's just a 1% allocation. And I do believe that that eventually grows on most balance sheets to be closer to 3%. And that's why my long-term uh, target for Bitcoin is closer to a million dollars. And I do believe that we get there at some point here. At what point? When you say long term, what kind of time frame is that? I'm I'm talking the next five to ten years. Yeah. So by in in twenty in twenty thirty three, I would fully expect that we're approaching that million dollar mark. Lavish's mid term prediction for Bitcoin is as bullish as his long term prediction for the leading cryptocurrency. The former fund hedge manager is predicting that by 2025, a year after the 2024 halving, Bitcoin will be trading above $70,000 per coin, which will be a new all-time high for the leading digital asset. According to the analyst, the Federal Reserve is bound to announce another round of quantitative easing to counter the many effects of its aggressive campaign against inflation. In addition, Lavish also expects long overdue crypto regulations in the United States. He believes this will make the crypto market and its leading asset by market cap very attractive to institutional investors. We also have the halving event, which historically has been known to pump Bitcoin's price. Let us know what you think about the analyst's $70,000 and $1 million Bitcoin predictions while we bring you more clips from the interview. This time, Lavish discusses the U.S. debt and inflation problems and how they are the main driving force behind the BRICS de-dollarization agenda. We operate in such a deficit that there's there we have two choices, right? Well, it, well, you've got a few choices. Let let's talk through it. When you operate in a deficit, the, the one of the main problems is that the greatest cost to this country right now is all of the mandatory expenses, right? So you've got Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. Uh, those those all add up to like three point eight trillion dollars annually. Then you've got your defense spending, and those are long-term contracts. We can't break those. That's about $800 billion. So now you're at $4.6 trillion. The interest on our debt is growing because as we're paying off debt that we had from years ago that was issued at a low interest rate, now we're issuing it at a higher interest rate while our interest payments are going up. And that's nearing a trillion dollars this year. But let's just say it's only $800 billion, right? So now you're at $5.4 trillion. Well, the issue here is that we don't take in 5.1, we don't take in $5.4 trillion in, in tax receipts. We're going to take in less than we did last year. So we're going to op, we're going to take in about $2 trillion less than we need this year. So what's our option? We can either cut expenses, which Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, you can. Who's going to cut that? That would be political yeah. suicide. So no, no politician will do that. That's number one. Number two, we could raise taxes, which again, that that ends up hurting productivity. It's a negative effect on, on people's uh, willingness to work harder and to take risks that will raise productivity because when you tax them, it, it puts limits on them. In the long run, it ends up limiting your GDP, which you get to the same spot, right? And then the third thing they can do is they can just issue more bonds, right? So, and if you're a country that issues bonds in its own currency, you'll never default. So when we were talking about the default over the last number of months, we weren't worried that the, that the U.S. was going to hard default, that they would recut the price of treasuries, that they would refuse to pay interest, interest payments on them. We were just worried that they would trip the debt ceiling, soft default, it would be, you know, a big battle, and uh, and then we would it would just be it would just put a big spotlight on the treasury market, right? So, but here's here's how they deal with it. They deal with it, Michelle, with with just it, it it's a long term high inflation environment, and they they initiate this through monetizing the debt, expanding the money supply. They don't want people to realize that they're doing this, but they're expanding the money supply in order to have high inflation. Why? Because if you have high inflation, that means tomorrow's dollars are worth less than today's dollars. So if you borrow at today's dollars and pay, pay it back later at tomorrow's dollars, then you've in effect, 
you've paid back with cheaper dollars and you and you're you're debasing your currency to deal with that great debt and so that's what we have to do is we have to have a high inflation for a long time in order to start paying down this debt the BRICS nations are on to us. They know that we that we have control of, of the global reserve currency and the global reserve asset, and they're kind of tired of that. And they know that we've been playing games with our money, and uh, and they don't they don't particularly like to hold treasuries long term and know that they're being paid back in cheaper dollars. That's not a good trade for them. So they're trying to opt out. Uh, will they succeed? Look, the, the BRICS has so many problems in those nations between Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. There, there's so many problems there that it, it it's going to be difficult for them to get one central currency that would that would unseat the U.S. dollar. Now, I do believe that the U.S. Treasury, it's on notice and it, it they could be unseated as the global reserve asset. And but the U.S. dollar is so entrenched around the world mm -hmm. that I think it stays for a while. It stays for a long time. However, the Treasury, that's where that's where it gets interesting. And that's where people start talking about having currencies that are backed by hard assets, backed by Bitcoin, backed by gold. And we're watching the BRICS kind of dance around this and talk about how they could have a currency backed by a hard asset. Billionaire investor Ray Dalio has a similar outlook as lavish for the United States economy. During a recent Bloomberg interview, the billionaire investor said he believes the U.S. is already in the latter stages of a debt crisis. Dalio is predicting that the government will have some difficulty getting sufficient buyers for the newly issued bonds. During the interview, Dalio said, There are changes now in terms of the quantities of treasury bills in the world that are being held by large investors around the world that have lost money in these treasury bonds and so on. And then there are geopolitical changes, which are having an effect. In some cases, some countries are worried about sanctions. The billionaire added that these changing dynamics could lead to supply and demand issues, which could then lead to a crisis if the U.S. continues down this path for the next five to ten years. Do you agree with Lavish and Dalio that the U.S. is on the brink of a liquidity and debt crisis? Please drop your replies as well as your comments on Lavish's bullish Bitcoin price predictions. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.